Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about peer review. Now peer review is a really important marker of quality uh, and that's especially important for OER in the absence of a traditional publisher and some of the other cues that are typically used to indicate quality in a text. So taking your book through peer review is really valuable uh, and making it clear that your book has gone peer review helps to indicate to adopters that the book is a quality resource, that it's had other experts involved in its development. But peer review is also just very useful to creators to make sure that you have that feedback and input and that you can be confident that you're creating the best content that you can. Working with OER means that we have an opportunity to think about the role that peer review is playing. It can and has at times been used to validate only certain kinds of knowledge, but the opportunity to bring it into a new kind of publishing process means that we can rethink its role, uh, consider who's involved and what they're bringing to the process as reviewers and how their perspectives can actually be a really valuable part of shaping the resource. Now, how do you go about it? The first thing we recommend is to find a peer review coordinator. It can be quite a process and so to have one person at the centre of it who's keeping track of everything that's going on can be really valuable. That may be somebody who's already in your team or you may choose to bring in somebody specifically for that role. Next, as a team, you should be thinking about what your goals and expectations are for the review and really decide on those and make sure that everybody has a shared understanding because that can influence some of the decisions that you make down the line about what kind of review that you do. At this point, you might want to consider what the external perceptions will be of the kind of re review that you carry out and how you're able to indicate it. But ultimately, it is important just to decide what's right for you and your project. Then the last thing to consider is when you want review to happen. Uh, depending on the time and resources available, you may want it to happen quite soon after content is submitted. In other cases, you might want to wait and make sure that content has gone through considerable editing. Both of those are valid in different circumstances. And again, it's what works for you. As you're setting up your peer review process, there are a few other things you'll need to think about. First of all, do you want your review to be anonymous or not? Do you want your review to happen on the full text or chapter by chapter? How many reviewers do you want to have involved? And then what kind of tools or format are you going to use? Are you going to ask people to review in something like Google Docs or in Word documents? Do you want them to submit comments or just a memo at the end? All those kinds of things you'll need to consider. And again, make sure that the team will understand that these decisions are in line with what they're trying to achieve with the peer review process. The last critical piece that you need before starting your review is a review guide. This document will be the one that you refer back to, that your reviewers refer back to, and that really frames the whole process. So it should include practical details like deadlines. Uh, it should also include information about the project and the audience so that reviewers understand the, the content that they're working with. It's also good to have a formal rubric uh, to give them some guidance on what you want to have involved and there are some great examples around that we can link to uh, that you may want to use. But it's also important to include some guiding questions on things that you're specifically interested in getting feedback on. You know your content inside and out and you may already have a sense of things that you're not too sure are working or that you want a bit of extra attention paid to along the way. And you might also want to include a few lines on reviewer etiquette. It's important to remember that they're giving feedback on people's work, something they've put a lot of effort into, and so a reminder to keep things constructive uh, can be very helpful. And then it's time to recruit. And at this point, make sure that you remember having a broad range of perspectives is really important in your reviewer group. Do what you can to get the word out beyond your own networks and make sure that you're actively encouraging people to get involved who are from underrepresented groups. Try to be adaptive as well as people start coming to you. So it may be that you set out to have two or three full text reviewers, but you get 15 responses, which is brilliant. So you may want to change at that point and have chapter reviewers with a couple of full text kept aside for the end. Or it may be the inverse. You may have hoped to get 15 and you find yourself with two or three. They can still be really valuable and really bring a lot to the text. And then remember that as reviewers come on board, they are joining your team. They're now part of this community around the book and will be for a long time to come. So make sure you keep them updated and in the loop. And remember, reviewers are an excellent source of adopters down the line. So the more you keep them invested and involved with the project, the more likely they are to be confident to use the text in their own classes later on.